Welcome to Programming in Modern C++. We are in week 9 and we are going to discuss module 44. In the last module, we introduced the standard library overview of C++ and most importantly, we have learned the fundamentals of generic programming, how to do metaprogramming in C++, uh, which will be the backbone for the standard template library. So, in this module, we will understand the standard template library better and uh, specifically take a look at some common container or data structures and their use. So, this will be the outline and will be available on the left panel. So, first let me formally introduce STL, uh, standard template library and it is customary to call it the STL, you will soon realize why. So, STL is a part of ISO C++ standard library. STL as such has four components, containers, iterators, algorithms, we have talked about these three and functions which are basically function objects. So, these are the primary components of STL, but we do not say that STL is such a you know well defined subset because we will see the use of these components in turn in almost every other component of the C++ standard library. Now, the STL is mostly non-numerical, there are only four standard algorithms that compute, these are the four standard algorithms, there is a component called numeric which uh, does that. Uh, it can handle textual as well as uh, numeric data, for example, it can most uh, of STL can work with say things like string or user defined data type. Right? So, it works with built in data type, user defined types, data structures and so on and so forth. This uh, amazing piece of the library was is a outcome of about 15 years of research by this uh, great computer scientist Alex Stefanov who uh, offered it to the standards committee and was uh, subsequently adopted in uh, very well in C++ to make uh, things most generic most efficient and most flexible. Now, your question would be that is uh, the ISO standardized STL or C++ standard library, is it the only one that exists in the world? The answer is of course, no. There are several other implementations of the similar ideas of uh, standard template library. The most uh, common being boost which is a open source uh, free peer reviewed portable C++ source library. The big advantage of boost is boost does a lot of experiments for the future generations of C++. Many of the things that we currently have in C++ standard library has evolved or even the language features have evolved from experiments in boost. So, you can consider contributing to boost as well. There are several others which are uh, commercial like uh, Microsoft uh, Visual uh, C++ STL, then uh, others and so on. Right? But most widely, the best known and most widely used example of generic programming happens in the ISO standardized uh, standard template library only. That is the reason we call it the STL. It is not a STL, it is the STL that you use. We have talked about uh, the basic model that the basic model is to you know separate the concerns of an algorithm and the container separately. The container and algorithm interact through the concept of iterators which go over the data structure in a in a physically or virtually linearized form to get give the algorithm the next data element as and when it needs and starts from the beginning goes up to the end or wherever you ask it to start and wherever you ask it to end. So, with that uh, the basic advantage uh, we, we noted is that the iterators uh, which are marked by the beginning of a of a data structure to one beyond the last element of the data structure can be clubbed 
with the algorithm so that the algorithms do not need to know about the containers when those algorithms are coded. They can just rely on the three operators of the iterators, which is plus plus to go to the next element, star to get the value of the element, and equality or inequality operator to check if two iterator values are same or not. In the same way, the containers also in turn do not need to look at know the algorithms that are applying on them. Their whole purpose is to support every container must support the corresponding iterators which are those three functions right so uh, how do you conceptualize this on the on the particular container if it's a vector it's an array it's a sequence uh, container things happen in a linear manner so the zeroth location is the is the beginning and one beyond the last location is the end of the iterator it is not necessary that it will have to be that it could be somewhere in the middle also you could you could say I will start doing things from 2, I have done something else uh, before that and so on. For a list, this will again be the same. So, only thing that will get different is the way these three overloaded operators of plus plus star and uh, equality comparison are implemented by the respective data structure, which the, is the responsibility of the data structure, responsibility of the container to implement. So, that algorithms can always assume that uh, whatever data uh, container they have for that the corresponding conceptually same operations are available through syntactically identical code. And this applies uh, this uh, concept of iteration applies also to nonlinear data structure like a set which is in a binary search tree form. You can do an in order traversal of the tree to get the order in which the data elements will be given for the iteration or you know your uh, implementation could choose some other order, but all that you need is there has to be a unique starting point, there has to be a unique end point beyond the last element and there has to be a unique order created out of this nonlinear structure. Now, with that we saw a find algorithm which is uh, very interesting in that uh, it takes an iterator class in and the element type class in the template. So, it then the find function takes uh, two iterators one where to begin other where to end defining the range and the value as a constant reference because you are finding. So, you do not want to change that value. Then the code is, is extremely simple which you write in terms of first part checks that uh, you there are more elements to check because first is not equal to last. And the second part checks if the current value star first is the value that you are looking for. If it is not, then you go to the next element as simple as that. It is just an iterative find algorithm. No, no smart things like binary search or anything being, being attempted right now. Now, with this, it, if you have different types of uh, containers with different underlying uh, data types but all of them support the iterator in the same way. The entire code that you write to do the find is exactly identical, because the, the algorithm find knew the, data, knew the iterator. So, algorithm find does not assume the data structure. The containers whether it is a vector or a list or a double impl has implemented the iterator did not need to know whether you will find or sort or sum or do whatever. So, it fits in you can see that except for the blue part everything else in the code is actually identical and this finally returns the iterator value. So, you have to check whether the iterator value is same at the end. If it is same as the end that means you have come across the entire data structure and you did not find the value. So, it is a failure if it is not same as the end again check the operator that the iterator has to support. If it is not at the end, then it you must have got the value at the iteration point, which is basically the value star p, because p is your iterator here. So, this is this is how the generic algorithms are written. You will find uh, this uh, find algorithm in the algorithm component of the STL. You can even generalize this further, saying that instead of giving a value, I will give a functor here, I will give a predicate here, I will give a you know 
a, a function pointer or a function object which will check certain property. Right? So, I am saying that uh, you go over this uh, vector and find the first odd element. Right? Now, this oddness is not a value, oddness is a property. Right? So, I can write a function as a function pointer to check if a given value is odd or I can write a function object to do that. I can pass either of them. So, what I am passing is I am passing a, a an instance of the pred class which is basically a function object. Right? So, I pass that. So, what happens is uh, when I am trying to do the iteration over this uh, data structure, I am just evaluating this function object pred with the given element. So, which is basically either a call to this uh, function operator, if I pass the functor as we have done here or it is a call to this function, if I passed odd, if I just passed odd as a function pointer. Right? So, either of that can be used and so this will make things even more more generic things can be done. So, you can write any logic as a part of this uh, uh, function object and you can find elements which can satisfy variety of different conditions. One uh, catch point to note here is uh, in the earlier form of find you, you needed to pass uh, set the type of the element here you are not doing that because you have set the type for the functor object. You have set the type for the functor object. So, this functor object here takes the element type. So, since you are calling odd for checking the, I mean checking as a predicate, it has to take an int. So, it will operate on the int, right. So, that is the kind of deduction that the compiler would be able to do. Now, if you look into these two forms of find, you will find that the basic uh, algorithm is the same start at the beginning, keep on checking uh, on the value, keep on going till the end. Now, the way you check that has been changed. In the case of find, the check was by equality. In the case of find if, it is by some other predicate, right? which could have been equality also. So, such elements in the design of STL is called a policy. That is generically speaking, I am trying to do find. And I have a policy for deciding how I find or what I find. Here is another example on this, which is from your more common domain of sorting. So, I have a record which has say two fields. One is of type string, another is of type character array, which is basically C style string. Right? One keeps the name, another keeps the address of a person. Now, I have a vector for this uh, record. So, I have of that. So, how do I sort? To sort, I need to, we have seen sort earlier also, but now look at it from the generic programming point of view. To sort, what I need to know? I need to know the range, where to start, where to end. So, where to start is the begin iterator, where to end is the end iterator. And what else you need to know? You need to know how to compare elements. So, that you pass as a function object as a functor. Right? So, I have a functor implemented here as uh, compare by name, which overloads the function call operator for a pair of record references and does a comparison by using the compare function of the string type, because these are strings. Whereas, I also have another functor for comparing addresses, which is which overloads the function call operator again for a pair of records, because to compare I need two records, but it does the comparison using strn cmp function of the string dot h header of c, because address is a c style string, long terminated array of characters. right? So, you can see that uh, basically if you look at sort, there is no difference in the sort. Only thing that changes is the comparison policy. 
And based on that, the same sort code can be made to use not only on you know arbitrary data structures, but also on arbitrary policies. So that makes it really, really powerful and this is what is known as policy parameterization. So many of the algorithms uh, available in STL has the policy parameterization. Often they have a default policy, uh, but there is a provision to parameterize the policy as you want. There are some compact, more compact ways of doing that as well. I have just shown as example uh, here. Uh, but uh, we will come back to this uh, heavily when we do C++ 11. Here what I am using is I am using the concept of a uh, anonymous function, a function object which does not have a name. So, the entire code is written here and the, all of that struct, uh, bool, operator, parent, all that are shorted in the form of a pair of square brackets which is called a lambda or a closure object in C++ 11. We will we'll see more of that. So, I can also write the policies in this form. Certainly, the advantage is that if the policy is simple as it is here, then writing it right inside the sort call makes it easier to understand, makes it easier to follow as to what exactly are you doing. Of course, if it is a big code, you will not be doing this, you will not be using lambda you will be using a named object as we did earlier, but lambdas are available for doing this. We will see more of that. Uh, do not worry about not understanding lambda, you will, you will have ample time to understand lambda in the subsequent module. So, policy parameterization in general can be done through named objects as we have done or through lambda expressions depending on whether you want to reuse uh, the same policy in multiple places, you will use a named object or if it is if you need to have a lot of comments therein or you know uh, it is quite it's quite a complicated logic and so on otherwise use just use a lambda right so with that uh, let us take a look at the common standard library components so this is just a very very small part of the standard library the c++ standard library but also it's a fact that possibly these components will cover 80 percent, 90 percent of your common usage. IO stream, F stream we have already done. Then there are a number of containers of which also string we have seen in multiple places. We more or less understand. Vector we have seen in multiple places, but vector, map, list, these we will briefly discuss in this module to give you a better idea of the uniformity that exists between the containers of C++ standard library. Then there are other components which are very, very useful, the algorithms which give you all sorts of common algorithms, the numeric and the functional. And we will have more components come in when you do C++ 11 from the next uh, week onwards. So, let us look at uh, you know what is the structure of a, of a vector declaration. This is not the complete vector class in the standard uh, template library, but this is uh, the representative part. So, the philosophy is since there are multiple containers, the philosophy is to have as much of uniformity as possible. So, a number of containers have a number of functionality which is common, particularly you will need, you will have element type, right. You cannot have a container where you do not have element type, right, it is not possible. You will have, you will need iterators to write code in the model that we have shown. So, there has to be iterators. If we have iterators, there has to be begin and end of the iterator. Right? Since it is a container, there should be some way to insert, some way to remove element and so on. Right? So, these are standardized in the, to the extent possible in terms of syntax, semantics, even name. Right? So, that you do not really need to memorize a lot of things. If you understand it for one data structure, you will be able to guess most of the member functions and uh, types of another container, you know, almost with 90 percent certainty. Rest of it, you look up the manual. So, all that we need is uh, for a, let me just explain vector, then we will go quickly over the rest. So, you need, need the actual underlying container, which is uh, kind of T is the element type. So, elements is a 
pointed to t. So, it is an array as you can understand. So, vector has a type definition type def type allies for value type. So, if I do vector colon colon value type, I will be able to know what is the element type. So, that is defined as t. Okay. So, that is that is a very easy way of doing things. So, at any point you can know this and this is uniform for most of the containers. You need to use a iterator. So, you are saying using iterator. Now, what is the type of that iterator? I am not I did not uh, try to write this because this is a highly implementation dependent. This is not uh, standardized because this needs lot of optimization based on the particular machine on which the compiler will uh, target. So, this is implementation uh, defined uh, feature. So, you do not need to really bother about what that uh, the whole type expression is. All that you need to know is it has a name iterator. So, you are looking you are working with a vector your iterator type will be vector colon colon iterator. The nice thing about the uniformity is if you are working with list your iterator type is list colon colon iterator. If you are working with a map it is map colon colon uh, iterator and so on. Then your iterator uh, could be a constant iterator that is it does not allow you to make changes uh, in the code in the in the I am sorry in the container uh, values cannot be changed. So, you have a const iterator which is also uniform and then you have the standard member function you have a begin for the non const iterator you have a begin with for the const iterator naturally with the const iterator that it has to be a constant member function and similarly you have a insert which takes an iterator and a value and returns you and iterator that is you are inserting into the vector. So, you give the iterator to a point where you want to insert. So, it will be inserted before that and that iterator will be returned. Similarly, you do erase by giving an iterator and getting back the iterator after the erase right. So, you can see that it is a the whole target is to do a very very uniform design and as we will come to uh, in the next data uh, container type you will see that how uh, similar the entire uh, you know entire design is. But before that let me just quickly take you through some of the differences in semantics that may rise give rise to this syntactically they are uh, very similar. So, let us say uh, I am talking about insert of vector. So, this is uh, this is a vector that I have and uh, so I this obviously is my iterator type p as a vector of integer. So, vector int colon colon iterator p. So, begin is here is here I am I am starting at this uh, point right. Now, then so p I am sorry let us let me mark it separately. So, p v dot begin will take me here which is p right. Now, I do 3 plus p's. 1 plus plus 1 plus plus 1 plus plus 3 times I increment the iterator which means p will now point to this element 3 clear. I define another iterator q same as p. So, q will point here, but I do plus plus q. So, q points to the next element. So, this is how given this code I come to this iterator positions. Now, I do an insert with p of a value 99. As I do the insert what will happen? It will be at get inserted before the value that p is pointing to that is the semantics and all values to the right will have to be shifted. So, all values will get shifted. So, p will p will get returned whatever is returned is assigned to p. So, that is the position of the new element right you get 99, but as all elements get shifted q now points to 3 it was pointing to 4. So, q actually has become invalid it is pointing to something which is wrong. So, remember if you insert in a in a vector your 
pointers your uh, you know iterators other iterators will get invalid. Similar thing you can uh, see in terms of erase the value immediately uh, that have been inserted here I can I am erasing that. So, as I erase it will get removed values from right will be pushed back it points to 3, but q which was pointing to 3 will now point to 4 again it will get invalid. So, for insert delete in a vector the side effect is that other point other pointers or other iterators will become invalid. Right. Now, see if I, if I have a vector what are the different ways I can traverse it. Obviously, there could be multiple that we have already seen one is I can I can just use the index very simple. I can use the index uh, using a variable which is of type int it is uh, ok, but uh, not very advisable because uh, the implementer may have implemented the index using some other type say unsigned int. So, what vector does in fact, uh, almost all uh, containers do that is they have a type variable called size type, which gives you the type of the size variables in for that container right. So, it is better if you are using index it is better to use size type or better still I could have used an iterator simply I am doing the same thing just traversing it right. So, I could have used any one of this of that the iterator form is what we will slowly move more towards because in both of these the actual code is closely bound to the fact that it is a vector right. I, I cannot uh, have kind of uh, I, I cannot have do plus plus i and go to the next element in the list right. So, I would prefer to go by the iterator style. There are other uh, with this iterator style there are other styles which uh, will be coming in C++ 11 particularly when you are doing a entire data structure traversal. For example, you can say the value type is x value type we have already explained and just colon v in which case what it will do it will start from the very beginning of the container and go up to the end. This is called a range kind of uh, range kind of support you can even simplify it even further by just uh, saying it is auto ampersand you know what auto ampersand means we will come to right? in C plus plus 11, but just to give you a glimpse that you know iterator style is really really strong and you can you can see in here there is uh, no dead container no type nothing is mentioned it is it is just the variable given which is a vector of int in our case and given any other variable corresponding to any other uh, container of any other underlying type this will also work. So, let us consider a doubly linked list just to see the parallel this is the node structure which is trivial t is the value the two links from the double link. Naturally, you have a link pointer as the header right this time it is the header right. Now, you have the same value type because that is the underlying type the contain the iterator and constant iterator types will be available. So, will be the begin for non constant and constant iterator end for non constant and constant iterator insert in the same way erase in the same way you can see exactly except uh, for this link star and the name list everything else is same between this and the vector because conceptually they are all same. Okay. So, the code is generic and can be worked in a generic way. Of course, uh, depending on the difference of the semantics of the iterator the side effects will be different the same situation we are showing here where we have the same data in the list with uh, p pointing here and q pointing here and I do insert of 99. 99 comes in, but since it is a list there is no movement of elements. Therefore, q does not become invalid which was becoming invalid for the case of vector right. So, that is uh, for insert there is a case of uh, erase uh, also worked out for the case of uh, list the insert and erase do not 
invalidate the other iterators, but for vector they do. So, there are semantic differences that you will have to understand, but generically the code and the structure are all same and you can understand that on what context you should use a vector obviously, there is if there is no other reason you, will, you should use a vector it is most efficient. You can grow both vector and uh, list, vector can grow only at the back, list can go at both ends, you can do insert, delete, naturally vector has more compact storage, contiguous list have separate allocations. Let us look at uh, the next uh, container which is very, very interesting which is called a map. It is basically a kind of a you know it is not uh, a it does not do hashing, but it serves a similar purpose. In a vector you use an integer as a subscript, in a map you can use anything as a subscript, any almost any type you can use type of value you can use as a subscript. After vector map is uh, probably the most uh, useful standard library con container to be used. It is implemented as an ordered uh, balanced binary tree. So, let us look at the basic structure. I have the value type. So, map is a name value pair, you know. So, I, I say this is PPD and uh, this is uh, his age, this pair always. So, one the left one is called the key by which you index, and the right one is the value that you. So, the value type for a map or the underlying types element type for a map is a pair a key type and the value type and you pair them pair also is a is available in the STL to take a pair of types and make it into a pair type which is becomes the value type for the map. But you have the value type anyway, you have the iterator, constant iterator, begin, end, all this. Additionally, in map, what you have, you have a way to access an element. Actually, you have this in vector also, you do not have it in list because list cannot is not indexed. You have a way to find because in map, finding is, is somewhat different. Your insert works differently because now you are not inserting based on the iterator, you insert based on a value right? and you get the basically the key value pair, whereas uh, erase works on the iterator itself. Let us just uh, take a look at uh, an example of a map. So, I am doing a map which is a char int pair. So, key will be char, value will be int. So, the pairs I am, I am creating is a 10 that is character a 10. So, you can see the standard you know array notation coming in here. I can just say my map give that index value and assign the value. I can do this. There are other ways of uh, doing that also. I can do this by insert. If I want to do this by insert, I have to make a pair of these two values say I am I'm, I'm basically trying to do this. The key value is C, actual value is 30. So, I make a pair of them, I insert. Right. So, these are different ways you can do uh, you know insert uh, add elements to a map. Then uh, you can do a do the printing using the basic iterator uh, style here, here you are getting the uh, iterator and since map has two components of the pair, the first is the key, second is the uh, value which prints these values. You can do a find on map to given a key you can find what is the value that it, that it has. Right? So, this is very, very useful and uh, there is another example which is uh, uh, given here, I am not going through this. This is example of using a map to find the frequency of different words in a text. So, just uh, try this out and convince yourself about the use of map. Uh, there are other uh, containers also set is uh, another which is uh, which keeps this collection of unique elements. It is also stored as a binary search tree and just 
wanted to show you the uniformity, the value type, iterator, const iterator, begin, end, insert, erase, just signatures are little bit here and there, uh, very similar to what you have for map, but set is also a useful container. There are many more, uh, but uh, it is time to close on this module and uh, here we have learnt about the standard template library with common components, particularly the focus has been on learning the basic containers uh, vector and uh, map and some of the others that will also come in like string and set and so on and uh, what is their use. So, thank you very much for your attention and uh, we will meet in the next module.